Hey, welcome to our online service. My name is Greg Crome. I'm pastor here at New Life Christian Centre. Uh, we begin with communion. So if you'd like to grab some water and biscuit or juice and bread, whatever you want to use, uh, then please join in with our communion time. And then we have a, a great message for you today and also a praise and worship song. This is our online service and we hope that you enjoy it. If you would like to find out more about our church, then uh, please just check out our website and all the information is there. We'd love you to join us on Sundays personally. If you're in our area at Christie's Beach, 10 a.m. Sunday morning and 5.30 p.m. for our evening service as well. So God bless. We trust that you'll enjoy the service. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm just trying to relax after that exciting praise we had this morning. Yeah. Microphone. Microphone, yeah, okay. All right, thanks. It's my privilege to present the uh, communion today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you, Lord. Lord, we just pray for a blessing to be on everybody who is here today to praise and worship you, Lord. And we just pray for the blessing to be on uh, New Life Church on this year, 2024, this year of multiplication, that everyone should have it in their mind to be talking to their neighbours, to the people we work with, people in the street, people in the shops, Lord. We want more people here to, to know Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for that blessing in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. I've titled this uh, message as Israel were a fickle nation. At this time, we're just coming towards Easter. Uh, to me, that's the most important time of the Christian calendar. Um, Jesus is very active in this time. I'm quoting now from Matthew 21. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem when he sent two disciples to get a donkey and a colt from a nearby village, telling them, if anyone says anything, tell them that the Lord has need of them. This was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples laid clothes on, on them and set Jesus on them, then leading them through the great multitude who had spread their clothes on the road together with branches of the trees as a welcome for Jesus. The great crowd cried out, saying, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest heaven. As Jesus made his entrance to Jerusalem, the city shook with people, saying, Who is this? The prayed crowd shouted, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Next, Jesus went straight into the temple and saw everyone who was trading, trading there. He kicked over the tables of the loan shark and dove merchants. Quoting the text, it is written, my house shall be a power, called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. Then Jesus healed the blind and crippled who came into the temple. After this, Jesus harangued the Pharisees and the crowd for some time with many parables. Finally, I finished with the Last Supper, which Jesus had with the disciples. We all have the church, the elements, to be prepared. <laughs> then he took the cup, no, then he took the bread and blessed it, saying, take, eat, this is my body.
Then he took the cup, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. I just thank you, Jesus, for, for what you've done for all of us, Lord. Lord, we have all individual stories of, of what we've been saved from, but Lord, you've, you've saved us all, and we just thank you for that blessing in the name of your glorious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This, this month, uh, or the next few weeks, um, Pastor Mike Groom, our lead pastor of our group of churches, has given us a theme for this month. The seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. And the one that he gave us for this week, uh, the theme is affection. It's about what Jesus said from the cross. So let's pray. Father, we just enjoy being here with you. And Father, you're awesome. Father, that when we see all who you are and what you've done, your awesome way and works. And Father, it brings to us a sense of awe, a holy fear. You're just so wonderful. So I pray, Father, today that you help by your Holy Spirit as I share this word, these scriptures and the things you've told us in your word, that you'd make them real to us and life-giving. And so come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And help me today in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let me just put that down for a minute. I've um, got to get a little bit practised and make some PowerPoints for these messages. I've sort of been a little bit remiss in that, but um, you've got to do them right, otherwise they look horrible. <laughs> but anyway, so that's on my agenda. Okay, the theme of this message is affection. And the saying of Jesus from the cross was this. In John 19, 25 to 27, Here is your son, here is your mother. So what is affection? Affection is liking and caring for someone, tender attachment and fondness. Now in the, in the Greek New Testament, there are two words translated as love in the English translation. Now, there are quite a number of different aspects of love, but these two, philio and agapeo. Philio is having a, a affection. And that's philio, what, between friends, between a husband and wife, between kids and family and whatever. It's an affection, having a liking and caring for someone, tender attachment and fondness. Agapeo is love in action. You know when you feel really caring for somebody, agapeo is doing things that actually express that. Jesus has said he... God shows his love for us that even when we are sinners, his enemies, he sent his son to die for us. That's agapeo. That's love. That's affection in action. One leads to the other. So filio affection rightly expressed leads to action. So let's look at Jesus words on the cross this is John 19 25 to 27 near the cross of Jesus stood his mother his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby he said to her woman here is your son and to the disciple here is your mother and from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. 
You know, the disciple who Jesus loves is a name that John in his, in his, in his gospel and epistles, that's the name he calls it. He says, I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. He was the most intimate with Jesus disciple. He was the one who rested against Jesus at the Last Supper. There was some there was a strong affection and affinity there. Okay. So let's just unpack that a bit. Who was John? What I came to realise, I wasn't aware of that until recently. It's actually Jesus' cousin. It's quite amazing, isn't it? See, his mother, John's mother, Salome, was Mary's sister. Yeah. So Jesus was the firstborn son in the family. So he had the responsibility of caring for Mary, his mother, who by that time was a widow. Now he couldn't do that because he was going to the cross and then he was going to ascend. So he gives it to John. Someone, see, he did that because he had deep affection for his mother. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, one of the things that struck me, one of the persons that probably the greatest influence in my life was my natural mother. Sixty years I knew her before she went home to be with the Lord. In that whole sixty years, she never spoke an unkind word to me. She had, you know, it speaks in Proverbs about a godly woman has kindness on her heart, you know. And she just cared. Well, I was the oldest of three boys and we were real baggages. We were a pretty rambunctious lot. But she, with every ounce of energy in her body, she cared for us and looked after us and encouraged us. And I think in doing so, she actually, she actually imparted something to me which gave me great strength. And I think for those of you who are mothers, if you can do that, just show affection to your kids. Just can continually build them up in encouragement. You know, correct them when they need be. But do it in love, showing love and affection to them and you'll set them up for life powerfully. I think it's sort of in this, in this day we're living, there's, mothers are put down, you know, so it's not an important role. It's one of the most important roles on earth. Anyway, so Jesus, because he really loved and had effect, deep affection for his mother, gives it to his cousin John. So, John, you look after Auntie Mary. See, Mary was John's aunt. Look after Auntie Mary. Now, John, of, of the, all the disciples, was the only one that wasn't martyred. He lived to an old age. Mary, we, we, we've told, she lived about another 11 years after that time. So she would have been probably about 60th then. And here was John who had a deep affectionate relationship with Jesus and Jesus said, she'll look after him. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? It's a really special time. So Jesus' affection for his mother led to action. He commits her care to John, the disciple who Jesus loved, knowing that she would be cared for with loving affection. Here's something for you. That same affection Jesus has for us. You know, he sings love songs over us. Did you know that? In Psalm 42, 8, it says, By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. You see, you look at that and you first think, you're thinking about David singing God's song. But actually it's a duet. When we sing love songs to the Lord, he's singing love songs back to us. That's exciting, isn't it? 
I sort of took me a while to get my heart and mind around that. Because, you know, we think, oh, you know, does God really love us? Does he really care? Man, does he ever care? He sings love songs over us. So, let me just share some more with you. Jesus really cares. Even when we go astray. This is Hosea. My people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call to the Most High, none will exalt him. This was he was talking about Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, which had gone into idolatry and disobedient, rebellious and doing all sorts of stupid, crazy things. He says this, How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Admar? How can I set you like Zebulun? My heart churns within me. My sympathy is stirred. How passionate is Jesus' affection for us? Before the tomb of Lazarus, you remember when he raised Lazarus from the dead? John eleven thirty three, thirty six. When Jesus saw her weeping, that is Mary, um, Lazarus' brother, and the Jews who had came along with her, who were also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have they laid him, he said. Come see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. See, he was deeply touched. He really cares. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. You see, his deep affection for Lazarus led to action. So he goes to the tomb, open the tomb up, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Boom. Tell you what, that really created a stir. That really set the cat among the pigeons. The Pharisees wanted to kill Lazarus because they couldn't stand that. Anyway, you're precious to him, incredibly precious. Psalm 17, 8. Says this. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Do you know that you are the apple of God's eye? He looks on and he says, See my son, see my daughter, whom I'm well pleased. Whoa! You know, it says, and Jesus said this, that, you know, when a sinner comes, uh, repents and comes into the kingdom, they have a party in heaven because Jesus is delighted. God is delighted. He's so affectionate towards us. This one from Song of Solomon 7.10. Here, listen to this. Listen to this and take this. I belong to my beloved and his desire is for me. He desires you. Why? Because of his effect. He made you for himself. He made you to enjoy eternity with him forever. He desires you. He doesn't reject you. He says, I'll never reject anyone who comes to me. He desires you. He went to the cross so that you could come to him and be his. So... Peter, remember Peter. By goodness, I, I like, I love, I love reading about Peter. He's just one of these guys that says, "Just do it," you know. It's not, he just gets out there. He's a bit crazy, you know. Does these amazing things, all this boldness, and the only one that walked on water. Yeah, it was the one that said, "I know you're the Messiah." 
a son of God, you know. And he did all sorts of crazy things. He was just, there was just a boldness. It was a bit of a reckless boldness, and it got him into trouble a few times. But I'd rather be that and have a dull bore in life. Than that. <laughs> anyway, I think he, he's, a, he's an interesting guy. But you remember the night before the crucifixion. Jesus, you know, Peter said, oh, look, you know, the other... He said, I'll, I'll die with you, you know, I'll go, I'll do it, you know, I'll be there, I won't let you down. Three times he denied Jesus before the cock, cock crowed. And then it said that he went out and wept bitterly. He suddenly was un totally undone. He realised that all his brash bravado and his confidence and everything like that was really, didn't really have a foundation. And so... After the resurrection, Jesus says to his disciples, you're going to meet me up, I'm going to Galilee, you meet me up there. So what do they do? They have a barbecue on the beach. I mean, <laughs> you've got to think about it, this is really, it's really sweet, isn't it? So the guy says, Peter says, as usual style, you know, we'll go fishing. You know? <laughs> so they go fishing and they're out all night and catch nothing and then they come back and Jesus says, put your net in, you know, and you know what happens. They've got more fish than they can poke. But Jesus is already on the beach cooking fish. So, so they didn't need to go catching fish. And they come back there and this is something special. This is really a special time. It's a time of affection, really deep affection. John 21, 15 to 17. When they'd finished easing, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon's son of John do you love me more than these now what Jesus said was do you agape o me more than these and what's Peter's reply yes Lord you know that I love phileo I know that I have affection for you and what does Jesus say feed my lambs again Simon, son of John, do you love agapeo me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I phileo, I have affection for you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time, interesting, isn't it? Three times he denied, three times he says, Simon, son of John, do you love phileo? Do you have affection for me? And he said, Lord, you know all things, and you know that I love, I have affection for you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Do you see how what he was calling Peter into is to actually letting his affection take action, because that was agapeo, you know, looking after. Jesus said this, didn't he? He said, if you take a cup of cold water to the least of mine, you give it to me. You're doing it for me. You know, as you feed his sheep, as you care for one another, and you're doing it to him. That's an expression of agapeo, of that love. So that was Peter's commissioning, and he became the leader of the Jerusalem church, and eventually he was martyred. An amazing man, and, and there's more to talk about, but not now anyway. So Peter then urges us, to do the same, putting on the nature of Christ. In Peter 1, 3, 8, it said, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness. See, this is a grace thing. It's a gift to us. We didn't earn it or deserve it. He gives it to us. And... It says then that through these he has given us very great and pre precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So what he's talking about here is the impartation of the nature of Christ to us. That is new creation people, that's what he does. For this reason, because of this, make every effort, make this your priority, T 
to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge to add these things and to knowledge self-control to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love you see there's a, a foundation laid here and it's and it you know it's what paul says in corinthians says the greatest faith and hope these and love these endure the greatest is love jesus said that didn't he? he said you know it's the greatest commandment love god with everything in you and love your neighbor as yourself all the other commandments are fulfilled in this see how it builds up faith goodness knowledge self-control perseverance godliness godly character this doesn't happen overnight it's building up block upon block level upon level of character and the, and the character of god being built in, and the power of god and then to god let us mutual affection and to mutual affection love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure grow in it they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our lord jesus christ so i one of the things that i really have come to deeply appreciate is you know part of god's family that mutual affection thing is powerful nothing happens without it and for 50 years Margie and I have been part of this church and the kindly affection of the saints has been such a blessing it keeps you going when we care for one another affectionately pray for one another encourage one another so I just want to thank you for the encouragement and affection that you have. And for Margie and I, she's not feeling too well this morning, so I pray for her. Um, for Margie and I, uh, you have all become very much part of our hearts. Can't avoid that. You're just special and precious to us. It just grows more and more. I, you know, I go, up, like Greg's at the moment, I often go up to Bethel Centre and Pipe New Guinea. I've been in and out of there for about 30 years and got to know many of the people. I said to them several years ago when I was up there on a Sunday morning service, I said, every time I come up here, you steal some more of my heart. I come back to get it and you take some more. <laughs> That's the way it happens. It's the way it happens. And I think, I think that is also true here. You've stolen my heart and I come to take it back and you take more. It's just a, dyna a natural dynamic that happens. And so that's why Bruce and Tangy, when they come down here, you know, they, they stir my up. And I have an affection for you because the way that you come and just who you are just blesses me. As you all do. So, the affections and desires of our heart determine the course of our life. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So the affections and desires of your heart. So what, what do you mean to guard our heart? It means that the things that we really capture, our desires and our affections, are the things which are God-given good things. You know, I find that you have to guard your heart. I'm like, I'm a keen cyclist. I like nothing better than getting out there and riding my bike and... I think, yep, that's okay, Lord. Thank you for that. But most of all, that just has its place and it needs to be in its place. And there are many other things. There are all sorts of things can capture your affections and your desires. Make sure it's the Lord, his affection, your desire, 
And then everything else, it's interesting, seek first the kingdom and all the other things will be put in place. And God will give you what you need. So, to finish up, let our mutual affection for one another and for the lost. You know, Jesus had mutual affection, had affection for the lost. Do you remember Zacchaeus? This little skinny runt of a guy up a tree, despised by his his community because he was a tax collector from the Romans and he'd rip people off. Jesus looked up and said, come on, Lachius, I'm coming your place today. We're going to have lunch together. And Zacchaeus was absolutely blown away by Jesus just showing affection to him. And there are many, many other instances of that in the scriptures. And he shows that same affection to us. Whether we've gone astray or whether we want to serve him or whatever, he loves us and he always gives what's best for us because he really cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you with deep affection. So let mutual infection be an inspiration to love and serve one another. Amen? All right. I just want to pray now. Father, I thank you for these precious sons and daughters of yours that you've come into for Margie and I and our family, our lives. Father, they're such a precious gift and we just want to thank you and esteem them. And Father, I just pray for myself personally that you would help me to, that infection to grow a deeper and also to be able to agape them, show them, act in ways that bring the love of God into their lives. And Father, I just pray for my brothers and sisters here and, and those that are not here with us today, like Greg up in Pope New Guinea and others. Father, that you would gift us all in mutual affection to love and serve one another as you love and serve us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen? Amen. All right. Touching every heart 
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Who?